Welcome back. Sir John Ahmed has extensive experience in the building, civil engineering and industrial construction sectors. He is currently the chairman of National Express, but most notably was the former chairman of the London Olympic Delivery Authority for what has been described as the greatest show on earth, the 2012 London Olympic Games. He led the team that spent over six years designing and building all the stadiums and venues for the London Games, which were delivered nine months ahead of schedule and under budget. On the sidelines of the Bentley Systems Year in Infrastructure Conference, we sat down with Sir John Ahmed to learn more about the challenges of delivering such a huge project with the world watching and his opinion of Dubai as a candidate city for Expo 2020. Sir John Ahmed, thank you very much for your time this morning. Pleasure. Looking firstly at the infrastructure of the 2012 Olympic Games, with the Games now finished and widely seen as successful, how do you feel now about what the authority delivered in terms of infrastructure and how do you feel the infrastructure performed during the Games? Well, for us, when we were considering the infrastructure, it was always uh, two questions. How is this going to work for the Games and how is it going to work in legacy? So the first test was make sure that it's going to be successful for the Games, which it, which it did. It worked very well for, for the Games. Um, but really, more importantly, uh, how's it going to work for the next 20 years, the next 30 years? And so now we're in that transition period between uh, really sort of finishing the Games, the park is being transformed for, for legacy. Um, but what's important is that... Um, Already we can, uh, we can see that the venues are being used and they've got operators and uh, therefore they're being taken forward and used by the general public rather than uh, elite athletes. Uh, but the infrastructure in the park um, where the basketball arena used to be, we're now starting to build um, more new homes. Uh, we've got plans for 7,000 new, new homes in addition to the 3,000 that we built for the, the games, for the Athletes' Village. And that Athletes' Village, we handed over the first, uh, uh, handed over the first apartments literally this week um, to uh, the long-term uh, private, uh, private developers. Going back to the early days of the project, what was behind the decision to bid for the Games and what were some of the challenges that you faced in the delivery of a project of this magnitude? I think the, the, ch the attraction of hosting the Games, um, Britain had bid in the past, Manchester had bid unsuccessfully, um, London of course had hosted the Games twice, um, 1908 and 1948, so it was a long time since we'd last had the opportunity. And, uh, and Britain's a pretty sport mad country, so um, people are always keen to, to see, uh, see sport. Uh, but more than that, I think for the government, it was an opportunity to regenerate um, a part of London which uh, needed, needed financial investment. Uh, and then there's the more difficult one of are you going to actually be able to get young people to be more interested in sport going forward, a challenge which so many countries face these days. So I think it was the, those two legacies really, trying to create a legacy of sport and sporting interest for young people and also the, the regeneration opportunity. Now, for any large infrastructure project to be successful, obviously proper planning in the beginning stages is crucial. How important is the design and master planning for a successful end result? The master planning is absolutely critical. Uh, we have more than one go at it. <laughs> so the first master plans didn't become the, uh, the final master plans. Uh, and uh, we, from the time we were awarded the Games, we had a very sort of simple... Um, uh, thought process which we, we described as two, four, one. So that was two years of planning, two years of thinking, four years to build, and then a year before the games to have rehearsals and to make sure everything was, was working properly. But those first two years are absolutely critical and they're absolutely critical for any uh, major infrastructure project. Very often we want to rush into building things um, without really thinking through uh, the difficult questions about why we're building, um, what is going to be the long term uh, use of the building, how do we think about what it's going to be in the, how it's going to really work when it's being used as opposed to uh, the sort of tendency to let's make something which looks, looks great, but what's even more important is how it really works and how it's going to work for the people who use it. When investing the huge sums of money that has been spent on building a project like this, how these pieces of infrastructure will be utilised not only for the event itself but by the wider community in the future is a crucial aspect as you've just mentioned. 
In your opinion, what do you think is the legacy of the Games? For me, the legacy potentially is that we've created a totally new place in London. So London we often describe as being a series of villages. And, uh, and this was an opportunity to tilt the balance a little bit. London is very sort of West End dominated. Um, a lot of the money tends to be in the West. The East has always been the poorer end of London. And uh, they say that for every tube stop that you travel on across London, then your life expectancy increases by a year or decreases by a year, <laughs> according to which way you're traveling. Um, and so this was an opportunity to, to really get some heavy investment into the east side of London to create an, a really attractive place, a new park, massive new shopping centre which is already open, and sporting facilities, new homes, new places to work, um, all in, a, in about a 600 acre site, 100 hectares or so, and um, with very good transport connections. So really an opportunity to, as I say, tilt the balance a little bit and give more to the east side of London. Now this interview is being shown in Dubai and as you're well aware, the Dubai government is currently bidding to host the Expo 2020. How do you rate Dubai as a candidate city for this event? I, it has to be very strong. Um, I've been travelling to Dubai for 30 years. Um, we, we built the first um, golf course, the Emirates golf course in, in Dubai. And uh, so I've seen the changes, I've seen the speed with which Dubai has been able to adapt, the innovation, the, I mean, it's got so many attractions now and uh, the infrastructure of course is very strong. So I think it's an ideal candidate. Now if you were evaluating Dubai as a host city for Expo 2020, how would you judge the city and what do you think its strengths are in terms of the infrastructure that's already in place? Well of course the, the airport uh, developments have been um, enormous, I mean it's now rapidly becoming one of the central hubs in the world, um, seen as one of the most competitive uh, airports in, in the world. Uh, with the new um, light rail system and uh, the overhead rail system that's been installed. I mean, clearly always a very heavy emphasis on, on road. And now, now in the future, a chance to develop that and to uh, develop other transport networks. But massive number of hotels, very high quality hotels. Um, the Madinat and all the other places where people can go to, for leisure and uh, to eat, and of course even an indoor snow dome. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it's, Dubai has most things that people would want, particularly if they're going to something like an expo, looking for a combine a holiday with also business and other opportunities. So, in, and it's so you know it's so well located between east and west. I mean, it's uh, um, no, it's a really good location and has so many things. Now, Dubai and the UAE more generally has made rapid progress in recent years in its infrastructure development. Uh, Dubai now boasts the second busiest airport in the world. A free economic zones such as the Jabal Ali port, which has become a hub for logistics in the Middle East. And some of the most iconic tourist developments ever conceived and constructed. What do you think about the innovation of the development in Dubai and the speed in which Dubai has developed in comparison to other parts of the world? Well, of course, it has, it has uh, developed very, very rapidly, uh, more rapidly than some of its, uh, its neighbours, of course, who are now also uh, developing more quickly as they seek to catch up with, with Dubai. Dubai, I think, has always managed to sort of get the balance between moving forward whilst retaining many of the traditional values. It's a very safe place um, and uh, I think it's, it's um, been able to do, as I say, to sort of sit between East and West, between sit between modern and traditional, um, retain so many traditional values. It's, um, it, it, and at the same time it's shown this willingness to innovate. and. Um, uh, it's um, innovation is the key to key to the future, really, and, and it's interesting to see the sort of themes that they're trying to develop for the for the expo, and that it's not something which everybody waits for mm. until 2020, but a series of exchanges and development of innovation and collaboration leading up to 2020. I think is quite an exciting idea. Finally, we are speaking on the sidelines of the Bentley Systems Year in Infrastructure Conference. How important are events like this for the industry's experts? 
Well, again, I think it's, a, it's the opportunity for people to, to gather together, to meet, make new contacts. I mean, as, I mean, all business at the end of the day is dependent on people. And, uh, and so you need, it's our modern communication systems through IT systems and the, the internet and everything else is, is great. But there's nothing to meet to actually beat being able to meet people face to face and really understand one another and develop relationships to exchange ideas, to see what other people are doing. Um, and I would expect that most people will go away from this uh, inspired to, in fact, look at what they're doing, look at their own business, look at how they're um, seeing the future. And this gives them an opportunity to see it through other people's eyes, not just their own. So, John Ahmed, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thank you. And all eyes will be on Dubai when the host city for the Expo 2020 will be announced at the end of November. Well, that brings us to the end of our program. If you would like to get in touch with us, you can contact us at uaeweekly at city7tv.com or by calling us on 04367 2230. From myself and the entire team, have a great week ahead.